Okay, so I have said for a very long time that I am suspicious of Starfield. Yes, that is the technical term. Dare I say I am skeptical, especially because the company building it did Fallout 76, blah, 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 borderline criminal, they're evil. You've heard me say it before. But my broader point is just that I am not going to give the benefit of the doubt to a company that screwed me over so terribly last time, right? That's basically my stance. And as we've seen more and more of Starfield come out, people have started to get more and more hyped. People have started to get irrationally excited for this. People have been saying that it's one of the best games they've ever seen, that's looking to do things no game has ever done before. Things which we can demonstrate provably and conclusively are not true. And yet nobody really cares because it's fun to be really excited. So today, Todd Howard went on to the kind of funny games cast or X cast and he spoke to them in detail about the game offering some new details some interesting tidbits and I want to go through it now we'll check out the interesting bits and just look at it plainly not reading articles summarizing what he says but just actually hearing it from the horse's mouth what is actually being said about the game and as of right now we are filming this actually live over on Luke Stevens live on YouTube. So if you are interested, you can actually go check out uh, the live channel. Just search Luke Stevens live in the search bar and you can come hang out with us live when we make these videos and hang out together. It's a really, really good time and we'd love to have you. So I'll have that linked in the description, pin comment, blah, blah, blah. But come by, say hi. We have a great time. Okay. I'm very interested in this. I'm not really sure what to expect. I will give Todd credit. I love that he is being more transparent here. It's just refreshing because it seems like a lot recently we've been getting big studios putting out massive games and they just kind of hide behind the marketing and they refuse to say anything super clearly. But at least Todd is going out doing interviews, doing press which maybe he just enjoys it. Either way, I don't really care. It's just good to see that he's talking to people, trying to get stuff out there and be clear about what this game is and what it isn't, at least as best as he can be. Let's see, what have you got, Todd? But I want to talk about just a couple weeks ago because that Starfield Direct left me and many in awe. I thought it was fine. I don't really understand when people are saying in awe. Maybe I'm just a cynical prick, but <laughs> I I thought like it was a decent showing, but they very intentionally avoided discussion of some pretty key factors, which to me seemed a little sneaky. And to me, it was more a testament to how good Todd and his marketing team are at building convincing trailers and showcases, which is something he's been very good at for a long time. Going all the way back to like Oblivion and Fallout 3, he's always been really, really good at creating little showcases that sell you on the vision of a game. Even if there's other problems with the game, he's really good at framing it very, very well. And this is just another example of that. One of the no, 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 most yeah. asked yeah. questions was, Todd, we land on these planets and people are blown away by the size and the scope of things. Is there a land vehicle or an option to maybe mount some of these wildlife creatures to use as a land transportation mode of, uh, mode of transport? And again, this is the the whole point of that video i did on starfield i tried to couch it as best i could did you guys see that i was like my one little itty bitty complaint about starfield i feel just a little bitty itty complaint about the starfield showcase it's actually pretty big if you're gonna land on a planet and you're tasked with exploring it to me it seems unreasonable to ask the player to walk everywhere seems unreasonable to me. It seems like there should at the very least be, especially considering we have spaceships and we have the ability to have rovers and ships and transport vehicles and stuff in this universe, in this world, there's nothing wrong with it. In the world of Fallout, there's reasons you wouldn't have a motorcycle, right? Makes sense. In the world of like the Elder Scrolls, of course we have horses and things, but it, you know, there's limitations there in terms of speed and everything else. But in the world of Starfield, there's no reason why you shouldn't be able to just go and explore on a rover or with a speed bike or anything else. I see Anthony saying in chat, a jetpack. In every instance we've seen it so far, even in the skill tree thing that they showed, is something that basically allows you to have quick boosts, which helps you in combat or quickly exploring through different bases and things. It is not something where like you start jetpacking around the planet at 150 miles an hour. It's not like that. It's just not what that is. So this is a huge question and I don't know why more people are not talking about it. It's, I don't know if I'm suffering brain rot or if everybody else is, 
but it it to me is such a huge glaring problem that i just don't know why people are not bringing it up they're literally saying that if you have like for example here let me just pull up like google earth okay they are saying that like if this is the planet you're exploring looks familiar doesn't it if you're exploring this and you land over here we select this as our landing spot and then all the way in here it creates like a little landing pod or, or landing pot landing pad and you land right here okay that's where you land and then you start to explore you run around on foot and this amount of space is going to take you a while to get through eventually you're probably going to get over here to Cinquetti, maybe i'm not sure how to pronounce that and you're going to explore this a little bit but then you're tired and you want to go to the coast well, you can't just hop on a speed bike or even into your spaceship and travel all the way over to the coast. You can't do that in Starfield, apparently. Instead, what you'd have to do is you'd have to select your ship that's over here, hop back in, or presumably maybe you have to go all the way back to where it landed, or hopefully it can just be summoned to you. I guess we'll talk about that in a second. But then you'd have to go back out to the world map and then reselect over here this as your landing spot for the quick fast travel and then it would have to reland over here on a random spot for you and then you land and then you can explore but if you want to move further up the coast same thing you pull back out and then you have to fast travel back to another spot that to me seems bafflingly stupid if we're going to give you a planet to explore that you can't just hop in your ship and fly a little ways the only reason they wouldn't support that is because they couldn't get it working in the engine because that it's such a bare bones, simple mechanic to add if you're giving players planet sized maps to explore. Uh, there is not, you know, we do design it. I think when we, we've seen this with our other games where we want to design it so it feels good on foot, but we do have the boost pack. You saw some of that in the video and you have skills for the boost pack. So the boost pack almost acts like this vehicle. It's super fun where you can fly through. And then the low gravity planets are just um, really, really something special in the game. Who needs a car? You can boost pack around. Boost. <laughs> ah, I want to go to the ocean. 15 miles that way. Boost, boost, <laughs> boost, boost, boost. How does this like, how do you look at that and not think that that's potentially a major issue if you have planet-sized maps? Over a thousand of them. And I know some people were asking if you could mount like the creatures and alien like horses and stuff. I, you know what? That to me is on the same level as like alien fishing, but yeah, at least that would be a solution for traveling faster. But anyway, yeah, that's that's definitely not in the game. But something like a rover would be so simple and so obvious in inclusion. And for it not to be here is amazing. But watch how uncomfortable it is. Uh, there is not. You know, we do design it. I think when we, we've seen this with our other games where we want to design it so it feels good on foot. But we do have the boost pack. You saw some of that in the video. And boost. 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 And you have skills for the boost pack. So the boost pack almost acts oh. like this vehicle. It's super fun where you can... Emphasis on almost acts like the vehicle. <laughs> oh, God, dude. It's... Oh, man. Fly through. And then the low gravity planets are just um, really, really something special in the game. The low gravity planets are just really something really special. <laughs> oh, dude. Wow. He got red, didn't he? He got real red real quick. I, I'll be real with you guys. This is to me such an obvious thing to include. I would guess they probably were working on it and they probably had to cut it at some point. It's so obvious. Like it's, it's crazy that this isn't a thing. Yeah, confirmed Iron Man mod. Well, modders are gonna fix this. Like modders are gonna find a way to add like a little rover to travel on the, the planet, but that's gonna be a thing on PC because mods on console usually are not that like groundbreaking, not that transformational. So on PC, you should be able to do this on console, probably not, but on, on PC, that's gonna be one of the first mods is adding rovers to travel around the map in. It's, it's wild. Maybe they dropped it because Series S. Maybe it's just 
the creation engine apparently and let me be clear i'm not a coder i'm not a modder okay i have spoken to modders though that are working on all sorts of various projects whether it's like fallout london or whatever but apparently the creation engine is just well known for being very slow to process in new data specifically like new meshes and textures and things it's slow when it comes to that and, and that's why they've always been limited in how fast you can travel and run around. And so you're, you just don't have very fast vehicles. It's why like in fallout four, you had, of course, the, um, uh, whatever they're called, the hover ships that the brotherhood of steel uses, whatever those things are called. Um, so you had those, which NPCs could fly and you could fly in very scripted sequences, like where you're kind of there and then you see the movements and stuff, but you can't just hop in and go vertebrates. Yeah, vertebrates. They just don't have that, right? Because the engine can't really support you just going anywhere you want quickly, looking anywhere you want. It just doesn't work. They can sort of tweak it a little bit, but it's always been a problem with creation engine, especially on console, apparently. On PC, exactly, Archer. You can just set movement speed to 99999, <laughs> just go crazy. But on console, it just is not something that they've been able to get working. And apparently in Starfield, they couldn't get it working either to the point where you can't even just like fly a ship on a planet that you land on, which to me is a huge L. Like if anything could make exploration just feel dumb in this game, that's it. Again, I don't know why more people aren't talking about this. It's like they aren't thinking through the actual process of landing on a planet and wanting to explore it. It just doesn't make sense to me that nobody is concerned about this. It's baffling. I guess I should get Jez Corden's stupid question out. Oh, I said yeah, I would yeah, ask please. it. So, Todd, is there any kind of any form of um, space fishing? Is there any kind of fishing activity that you can do? Because <laughs> okay, that that is funny. I, I was like, if it if he's gonna flip around and be like, it's such a stupid question, and then it's something like in atmosphere flight or something like that. In my view, is not a stupid question at all. Space fishing is a little stupid, but I mean, let's let's hear what he has to say. In open world games. <laughs> That is? Well, it depends on your definition of fishing. Is there some kind of rod it? that I can put into a, <laughs> into a lake and pull out a, a, an alien fish and then sell it or, or, or cook it or something? That is one thing we do not have. Okay. <laughs> Expansion, though. But when I get to these procedural planets, is there really going to be things there to do that, that are worth my time? It, you know, other than maybe there's a resource here, or there, is it all just handcrafted or will there be procedural things that we could discover on these planets as well? Yeah, I think you have to be very specific with this question, because, again, remember, Todd is a salesman. And if you've ever been trained, like I've, I've been trained in sales, I've worked selling apartment buildings to millionaires and billionaires. So like I, I've had experience in sales. And one of the 101 most basic things ever is you never, for any reason, focus on the negative. You know, it's like even Todd having to say there's no fishing poles in the game. That was uncomfortable for him because he doesn't want to talk about what this game doesn't have. He only wants to talk about what this game does have. And in this case, it's like, yeah, the procedural generation, people obviously are kind of turned off by that because they've played a lot of games where it's procedurally generated and it's kind of crappy. There's just repetitive stuff that's not that interesting. So when you ask him, hey, is there going to be unique stuff that's worth your time doing? Of course, he's going to say yes, because he's got to sell you on the game. But that's why you have to be specific. You have to go into it with. So over the course of, say, a, a, a 10 square mile area of the planet or a 10 kilometer squared area of the planet. How many points of interest? How many dynamic events can we expect? What are players going to do when you go in there? And then he has to specifically react to those particular statements and questions and prompts instead of just being like, yeah, there's going to be a lot to discover, a lot to do. And we just can't wait for players to see it. You know, you got to be specific with this stuff. I think that's you know the million dollar question as it comes to a game like this it's a great question one that we honestly struggled with early in the project we wanted to do the planets because we like to give you that choice where do you right. want to go you feel like you would want that choice in a game like this and so first it was technically could we pull it off and you know we did technically be able to you know draw these planets make them feel believable on the screen um now obviously it's procedural, okay? So th there's no way we're gonna go and handcraft an entire planet. What we do is we handcraft individual locations, and some of those are placed specifically, obviously the main cities and other quest locations. And then we have a suite of them 
that are generated or placed when you land, depending on that planet. Now, I'll also say for us, we view it as giving you, when you look at a system, here's the menu of things you could do. And like science, and we're pushing it, about 10% of those planets have life on them. Again, we're pushing it to the edge of what do people think, what planets are in that Goldilocks zone. About 10% of the planets have life. I know some people in chat were like, oh, cringe. They only have 10% of them have life. But like Todd just referenced, it's also about the Goldilocks zone. It's about like not, not most planets out in the uh, not just solar system, but within the universe itself, within the galaxy, I guess. And certainly within the universe, as far as we can tell, don't have life. Most of them are like big gas giants and ice balls and things. So life on planets being like there 95% of the time would be not very realistic. So I appreciate them having that detail. I would say it's probably harder to make a world without planets or without life interesting. But who knows? Who knows? We'll see. We hope everybody you know, enjoys it for what it is, but it is an exploration. We hope everybody enjoys it for what it is. It's incredibly difficult to do this. Like, it just is. When you make a game that you're trying to do, like, realistic things to, not all the time is it going to work out well for a video game. Like, if you just were to recreate, like, we talked about this back in the day with Assassin's Creed Origins, where they had basically the entire map of ancient Egypt, right, but shrunk down and much more dense. If they did just a one-to-one -one recreation of ancient Egypt, it really would not be a very fun game because like traveling from the pyramids all the way up like or over to Thebes and then maybe you travel all the way up towards Alexandria, that would take hours and hours of in-game time just trudging over sand dunes and then along the Nile and stuff. It really would not be very fun. There would be a lot of emptiness. So for a video game, you usually have to trim things down. You have to shift it. You have to prop things up in certain ways so players notice it. It's very, very tricky and difficult. And when you create a game that's set in space where you can travel to over a thousand planets, how do you make it feel grounded and like reasonably realistic while also having it be fun and engaging? Because without a doubt, I mean, he basically just touched on it. He likes the Buzz Aldrin quote of, you know, the, the beauty and the desolation of these planets. So there are going to be many planets you travel to where there's just iron deposits and that's it. Like that's what the planet is there for, for you to land on, get some metal materials and then fly away. And this is why I think it's just important to understand what this game really is instead of getting super hyped up on stuff. I saw somebody on Twitter that was saying, no, the empty planets have been built that way so that you can build bases that span the entire planet. No. No, at, at no point have they said you can build bases that span planets or that can stretch beyond like the little bubble they showed that you can craft it within. At no point have they said that. You're just making stuff up because you're excited by it. It's like when people are talking about GTA 6 and they just go, well, I heard that in GTA 6, you're going to be able to actually get somebody pregnant and then you have to pay alimony. It's like, no, you're just making stuff up, okay? Like, let's chill out and look at what it actually is based on what we know now. And this, I think, is the broader point of being skeptical about stuff. It's about withholding judgment and not being convinced of a thing until there's adequate evidence of that thing. So if I look at a game like Forspoken and I say, I'm not sold on it. The dialogue seems really weird. Uh, graphically, it seems really inconsistent. I haven't seen anything that really hooks me about it. I'm not gonna pre-order the game. I'm not gonna buy it because I'm not convinced that it's going to be good. If the game launched and it ended up being amazing, I don't have egg on my face. I just wasn't convinced because they didn't do a good job of communicating it or because there were a lot of other mitigating circumstances. I just withheld judgment. And then once the game comes out, if the reviews were great, now I'm convinced and I can get into the game. And with Starfield, I'm looking at it and I'm like, well, I'm not super convinced. There seems to be a lot of potential hiccups, but it's on Game Pass, so you're not paying 70 bucks up front unless you're on like Steam or something like that, which is a huge, huge plus. Being able to just download it through Game Pass Day 1 is tremendous. And then also other things like, yeah, it's Todd Howard's passion project. That to me gives it a couple of extra points and things. And the key being, as long as you understand what the game actually is and what they're able to do and what they're not, you will have reasonable expe expectations and be able to go into it and actually be sold and, and have a much better time. And I would say, look, developers know this, but there, there are things that you can do to make that look and feel great 
um, things like motion blur, how fast the game refreshes or reacts to a controller input, all of those things matter to something feeling great. And I, I can honestly say this is the best feeling game uh, that we've had. Yeah. Todd confirmed Starfield feels really good. <laughs> feels really good and i will i'll stand by them on this one this is one of the stupidest points i've heard people complain about uh i still think they should have been clear about 30 fps way earlier the fact that they waited until like a couple hours or i think maybe even a day after the starfield direct to tell people that it ran at 30 that to me i thought was a bad look they should have just come out and been like no it's 30 but let us show you why at the starfield direct um because it it earns it you know it's because we were doing a lot that's the one thing i will say that i think they screwed up on they should have been clear about that earlier but for people to say like starfield is is a a bad game or should be boycotted or not played because it only runs at 30 is just dumb some of the greatest games i would even say most of the the greatest games in history launched at 30 and did that make them bad no red dead 2 launched at 30. last was part two spider-man like there's all of these games that launched at 30 and were, were great they were amazing so clearly you can have an amazing game that runs at 30 and that's not the reason it's like it's it's not a huge ding is it preferable it offers a 60 fps option sure it's also preferable it has 120 fps option that would also be preferable but that's a little less reasonable, right? So we can always keep going down the line. Like, would it be preferable to also have an 8K mode? I guess. But does is it not having that? Would that make the game bad? No, of course not. That's just dumb, you know? So I, I will stand with them. I think this is a really dumb thing for people to complain about. There are plenty of things to look at with Starfield that are, let's just say, bold choices that don't make a lot of sense besides the frame rate. So... Um, I, I don't think that's that big of a deal, but again, they should have communicated this earlier because as we've seen, and this is why hype is important. If you leave a vacuum of information, people will fill it with speculative nonsense. They just will. If you don't communicate clearly, people will come in and make stuff up to explain the void and to fill that void with information. And a lot of it is going to be wrong because it's speculative. People are just making stuff up. And then once you bring in the truth, it clears out some of the misinformation, but a lot of the misinformation is still tangled up in there with the truth. And so you're going to end up with people that have like conflicting beliefs at the same time, just straight up cognitive dissonance. It just creates a mess. But all this to say, I do think they should have been clear about this earlier, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. Do you feel any additional pressure given? I mean, obviously this, and this is not even within your control. It's just kind of the way that the history of Xbox has worked out that, you know, there's been, the vibes have been off of Xbox for a little bit. Like where are the games? So where are the big, big games? And Starfield has kind of emerged as just wait for Starfield, wait for Starfield. This is going to be, this is going to be like, it kind of feels like, you know, like when they redid Star Wars, right? They paid 4 billion. I remember JJ Abrams said this movie didn't cost 150 million. It cost $4 billion. Because that's what we paid for Star, for Star Wars. And this is the kind of thing where like, if you know, something that big, the, the, the stock price of the parent company moves on how these, these, these mega, you know, tentpole things are received. Do you feel, do you feel like you're carrying like the weight of like Xbox on your shoulders right now? When, when that's kind of the narrative that seems to be emerging, like Starfield is going to be the standard bearer for Xbox this year? I think I was feeling better before you asked that question. <laughs> Uh, that's good it's like well when you put it like that oh god <laughs> jesus look we're focusing on what we can do um like i said on this game and i would say xbox has been just their support has been incredible on this uh with phil and matt booty and the team over there and obviously we worked with them a long you know for a long time going back 20 years at Morrowind. but being part of xbox and their support has really you know it has allowed us to be this ambitious and uh take these risks and uh, fingers crossed yeah and i mean one thing you got to give Xbox credit for, apparently what they said was the original release date for Starfield was way farther back than people thought uh, before the original announcement. So apparently it was originally targeting, I saw somebody report, it was looking at probably a 2021 release date originally. And then when Xbox got involved, they just said, whatever time you need, go for it. Just go crazy. So all told, I mean, there's a good amount of information that they put out there. I think they did a generally pretty good job there. I thought that they asked some hard hitting questions. There were some others that I wanted to hear, but all told, not a total waste, uh, like a lot of the IGN coverage was. And in terms of some of those tough things, like the no rovers and stuff, no vehicles or anything like that, I'm going to be very interested to see how some of the more hardcore fanboys react to this because to me that's a big deal and it seems crazy that more people are not concerned with that but 
I guess time will tell if it actually matters. And again, the game could still be great even with no vehicles, but it's still just a really, really weird choice to not have that. Really, really weird choice. Anyway, I'm going to go pick up uh, Locky. He's going to get up from nap here in just a second. So I'm going to go get him up. Thanks for watching. Thanks for chilling with me. I love all of you dearly. Anyway, thank you for watching, everybody. Thanks for chilling with me. Hugs and kisses. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.